Hi everyone, welcome to Physics with Ben. Alright, I am here for us today again and I want to beg you to watch this video till the very end. Uh, this is a video series I'm making on YEC 2025 Physics 3 Alternative A. Uh, it is a video to give you an overview of what you would see, what you may expect in your YEC exam this year. I have been given this brand envelope officially and I have gone through it and I have copied this. It is highly unprofessional for me to tell you the contents of this. However, I can tell you what and what you would expect. Disclaimer, this is not your real practical exams. You are not going to see exactly the exact questions that I'm going to solve for you here today. You will see something just similar to this, but not exactly as what I'm doing in this video. Again, uh, you may not get all that you are looking for in this video. So I would advise you also watch other videos to see if what I'm doing is in line or is right. But I want to tell you, uh, my predictions always come to pass. So watch and share this video to other people. Okay, uh, this is what I have to say about question number one. Remember, your wild particles carries the highest mark. And if you do it very well, you are definitely going to get an A or a B or a C in physics. But my, my wish for you is always an A plus or a B in physics. So I want to use this video to tell you guys congratulations already in your exams. And don't forget to distance yourself from examination and practice. If you are following physics, if you are a subscriber to physics with Ben, please distance yourself from examination and practice. My videos can help you to get an A or a B in physics. I assure you of that. Okay, question number one. The apparatus listed in question number one, uh, when you look at all of them, they will be like, going to confuse you. You can use the apparatus to set like three or four experiments. So I have come up with something like this. So I'll just show us what I have written here and then we'll look at it and so that I'll just save myself the energy. So uh, look at this. Uh, based on what has been given, And that is that for optics. Question number one. This guy is there. It means that we have to put put this this side is on. You can clamp this here and hook it here. But then the mass given. It's just one. You can see this. This is one set of question number one. This is it here. But then the mass given is just one. So we need to have several masses. So if they want to set this one, they may bring several other masses for you so that as you are changing the masses, the you will vary the period of oscillation. So this is one of the experiments. But my mind is not on this particular one. So I'm going to put this aside. The one that you expect from that question number one, you know the, the request for three record stands, and uh, you just people to hang the, the spring here, and then the mass will be hung somewhere here. But then this one too, I, my mind is not here. So I am going to put this one aside. Good. I'll also put this one aside. I'll put this one aside. So you see, the two are now in my front. I call this one the bifilar experiment. So this is the question I am very, very sure you are you will likely see in your in your exams. So I am going to 
fast fast forward this video and I'll set it up and then teach you what I did. But then you have to put a groove here, put a thread here, or the same length, one thread here, and then one thread here, and then you, you now put a groove, and then I just do the setup and then you see what I'll do. So this is the experiment my spirit is telling me you would likely see in your Wayek this year. We call this by filler simple harmonic uh, experiments. So this is set up. If you observe, there are two stones placed on the base of base of the retort stand. Those stones are placed there in the sense that you see the mass in the middle there. When you place that hundred gram mass at the center of the ruler. The weights will be tilted in the front and if those stones are not there, the arrangement will scatter and in the middle of the experiment, when such happens, you'll be very, very, very confused. So I'm going to take the camera close so that you can see the setup. I don't, I don't want this video to, to, be, to be so long. I will just do small something and as a guide and then you can just go and perform it at home on yourself and then you get your result. I will also show the past questions where we can get this experiment. So I'm going to take it close right now. This is where the thread has to pass. You can see this. Good. You can see this. So the thread will pass here, straight down, and then right here, you can see that there is a groove. You can see that. It pass here. This thing can you can you can take it up and take it down and then you can hang it down here like this. Good. So and it is placed at the 90 cm mark. The same thing with this one. You can see the groove. Good. So straight up to this point the stone to support the base. The examiner's request for two rulers. The first ruler, this is what it will be used for. The second ruler is, is gonna be used to, which is what I'm holding in my hand, to vary, in fact, to, to vary the length of these two thread, this thread and this thread. So how do you measure it? You, you, everything must be the same. If this one is 50, if this thread is 50, this thread too must be 50. That is how you go about it. So what do you do? You place it at the back. Look at this. You take it to the back. And then the tip of the ruler, the zero tip, will be there. And then you take it down. Now, mind you, this experiment is not performed by just one student. It cannot be run by just a student. Two students should run this experiment together. So this is it. So right now it is a. Uh, it is at seventy-three point five. So I I want to make it seventy seventy. Just watch. And so I will go up there and pull the thread. So if another student is here, you just go up and pull the thread up there for me. So I will go up and pull the thread and then you will see that it is to be 70, 70. Stay tuned. So I am done measuring the two loops. So let's try it and see. So I take it to the back, take notes, the zero is there. Then if you wash down, good. It is at 70. That is 70. And then I will measure this one too. I will take it up so that I can see. Good, that is 70. So, 
That is how to go about it. So now that we have confirmed that they are 70 70, I will move to the next line of action. So the experiment I am about to demonstrate, this is where it is from the past in the past question. This is it here. And uh, this is it. You can screenshot this. This is where it ends. Good. The mass I'm holding in my hand will be fastened at the middle of this ruler, which is the center of the gravity. And that can be done with the aid of the masking tape I am holding in my hand. Stay tuned. And so the masking tape has been used to, that is the cello tape has been used to, to fasten the mass to the metal rule. So the other metal rule that is there on the, on, the, on the table there is to be used to be measuring the, the length of both thread. That is, the length will be varying, that is from maybe 70, 60, 50, and so on and so forth. So based on the past question I, I just showed us, the distance between the two loops is uh, our D. You see that? And the vertical distance, the vertical height stands for the H. And that C stands for the center of gravity of the ruler. I, I, I'm seriously, I don't want this video to be long, uh, just to make you understand, have an overview of the whole experiment. So this is it. So, Right now, in this past question, they talked about 20 complete oscillations. Do you see that? And that is why you, you need a stopwatch for this experiment. So I'm going to displace this uh, and it will oscillate for 20 and then I will generate a table of values and then I will leave you to do the rest by your Safe, and that will be the end of my explanation. Thank you. Now, how do you displace this? You displace this as though you want to turn a tap. Watch me, like this. And then you, re you release. You see that? We call this horizontal oscillation. It's going like this. So it will go one, and come, that is one oscillation. So I'm going to displace it and then we are going to count the number of oscillations now. And then my, my stopwatch will also be reading. So you watch and see what I will do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And so we we got this. Nineteen point six seconds. We are going to do it for the second time to be sure of this value. Okay, here we go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Look at this. 
we got 19.4. So 19.6 plus 19.4 divided by 2 is what we are going to do. So with this, I am going to generate our table of values. And then you're going to replicate what I have just done for all the values. And that is just the experiment. Don't forget that I have other videos on this channel that are related to this on simple harmonic motion that will help you.